Today, I'm going to be talking about gaming mouse feet, specifically about a brand called Sapphire Skates. Maybe you've heard of this brand, maybe not. So it's a brand created by myself, Feels Good Man, and it's the world's first sapphire crystal mouse feet. So I launched the website about five months ago in December 2021 and um, didn't start the marketing yet or anything like that but started to get sales. So it's definitely kept me busy, but luckily I have a small team now in addition to our factory that produces Sapphire skates exclusively for us. Moving on to number two, why use Sapphire in mouse feet? So I wanted to create a gaming mouse feet using the best possible material. And I was already somewhat familiar with Sapphire um, because I had a Sapphire crystal on my watch. And just by seeing and feeling the Sapphire crystal on the watch, you can already tell why it might make a good material. Um, first of all, it's relatively resistant to fingerprints and moisture. Sapphire or ruby is also used in the internals of the watch. So you can see the ruby here and ruby is basically the same thing as sapphire, but when it's a uh, ruby red color, it's referred to as a ruby and all other colors are referred to as sapphires. It combines low friction with durability, unlike any other material here on the Mohs hardness scale corundum, which is ruby and sapphire. That means that very few things are gonna scratch sapphire. We've made a ton of improvements to the product in the past few months. So for anyone that's made up their mind about the product already, I do invite you to um, try it out for yourself and form your own opinions about the product. Um, specifically, we improve the level of polish. So just making sure that the surface quality is higher and higher, and that's gonna decrease friction, generally speaking. And then also just making sure that the um, shape is consistent and the edges are good and the color is good. Um, also made improvements to the packaging as we went along. And one thing that we discovered um, that was really slowing down um, the Sapphire Skates was a residue that was left over from either the polishing um, process on the factory side, um, because if you have basically the um, diamond paste from polishing, if it's left over, it's quite slow. And um, that seemed to have a really dramatic impact on level of friction and um, the glide has improved a lot. But in addition to that, we're always trying to find ways to improve the product. The fourth thing on the list is something that I feel like needs to be cleared up and it's the coefficient of friction of Sapphire and whether that's lower than PTFE, higher than PTFE, you know, lower than glass, higher than glass, etc. There's like this Reddit bro argument that PTFE has a lower coefficient of friction than um, some other material. The problem is that um, coefficient of friction must include a surface pairing. So two materials interacting can't exist on its own. Um, different materials are gonna have um, different coefficients of friction. If you wanna find out specifically about Sapphire Skates and the COF, um, you can check out this article called How to Get the Lowest Possible Friction with Sapphire Skates that I wrote. And I test uh, a bunch of different surface pairings, have some recommendations on how to get the best glide um, just with Sapphire Skates. Um, we have taken measurements as well with um, other materials from different uh, manufacturers and um, we have some preliminary results, but we will do more in the future. Now there's lots of ways to measure friction, but this is an easy way to measure the coefficient of static friction. Just see um, at which angle the object falls. So at which angle does it break the force of friction? Um, so I have a brand new set of Pulsar uh, super glides on uh, and, and just took it off the plastic and the um, purpose of the the coin it's a silver coin that weighs 26 grams it just so that we can apply a consistent weight um, to the top of it and then you know sapphire skates five of them as they would normally be used so i think it's a pretty fair test um and then you know i'll just very Gently tilt my mouse pad. You know, usually you, you want to do this in a more controlled sort of way, but I'm just going to tilt the mouse pad. And you can see Sapphire Skates is already starting to move. And now the Pulsar Skates are starting to move. So. I'm not sure why the Pulsar is so much slower in this test. Next up, let's talk about how it's made. So the first thing is that the process is very different than um, material like glass or PTFE. So those materials um, you can cast in a mold. So take glass, for example. Glass starts off as basically like liquid sand, so like molten sand, and it's heated up to a really hot temperature 
and then it's poured into something and whatever that something is, um, it's going to take on that shape. And as it cools and hardens, then you have the object. And then uh, PTFE is somewhat similar, but uh, a little bit different in that um, first you have a chemical reaction that creates PTFE, then it becomes a bunch of particles of PTFE, then it gets pressed into billets and those billets get heated up just like the glass and then you know poured into something or pressed into a shape. On the other hand, you have sapphire, which is a crystal. So crystals have predetermined structures that are held together uh, in a repeating pattern, unlike glass, which is held together randomly. And it's that crystal structure that gives sapphire some of its unique properties, but just do note that it's not necessarily the strength that comes from just being crystal by itself. But the goal here is that sapphire has some unique properties that we want to retain. Um, so we can't um, just melt it. Here's a very simplified explanation of how sapphire skits are made. So we do start with whole crystal buels. As you can see here, um, this is one of the ruby buels that we started off with. We use synthetic sapphire, which is better than natural sapphire. And anyone who uses sapphire for um, practical reasons will use synthetic sapphire because it's way more consistent, way less impurities. Um, so you can smash sapphire on, on itself, crush it up into bits, um, then you slab it. And then uh, we have a process where we just basically get the rough shape and round it. The polishing is over the course of days. So it's not something that can be mass produced easily. Number six is a question that I often get asked and it's what is the difference between Ruby and blue? Um, first of all, the naming Ruby is more of a um, gemstone convention term. Um, where it refers to a very specific color of red, um, and that's a ruby, but every other um, color of corundum is a sapphire. Since they're basically the same crystal, the performance is going to be the same, so you might wonder why one costs a lot more than the other. And you'll find this in the gemstone world as well as sapphire skates. Blue costs more than ruby, and our raw material cost for blue is a lot higher. So the way that um, sapphires get their color in nature and in a lab setting is through a process called doping. Um, we're not dyeing the sapphires or painting them because it's gonna change the mechanical properties of the surface. This process called doping um, basically integrates the color into the crystal structure itself using really small amounts of other elements. So in the case of Ruby, um, Ruby utilizes chromium as a dopant. And blue, to get the blue sapphire, you need um, titanium and iron. So Ruby is relatively easy to get uh, in terms of the color and blue sapphire is um, much harder to get the color right. It requires a much higher degree of precision. I think it requires 100 times or so more precision um, compared to um, the ruby sapphire. Number seven is sapphire's scratch resistance. And really this is one of the main selling points of sapphire skates compared to other materials. You can get low friction using PTFE or glass, you know, depending on the surface pairing, um, you might have different results. Um, ceramics also really good, but kind of a vague term. But the one thing for sure that Sapphire has versus competitors is going to be scratch resistance due to its hardness. Um, it's really hard for something to um, scratch Sapphire because when two objects interact and they come into contact with each other, the softer material is going to yield to the harder one. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't break sapphire. Um, if you smash sapphire, basically sapphire will shear on itself. We are the world's first sapphire crystal mouse feet, um, launched late December 2021. But I fully expected that people would eventually copy sapphire skates because I feel like the material is really good. So it was recently brought to my attention that someone was selling um, sapphire crystal mouse feet and I checked it out and I immediately recognized the shape and I saw a lot of comments like being like, why is it weirdly shaped with like two of the edges straight? I immediately recognized this as one of the magnifier windows on certain watches, that thing that goes over the calendar date um, because I actually tested these mass produced um, pieces of sapphire crystal when I was prototyping sapphire skates. I just wanted to ensure that sapphire was a good material and you know, it's good to start with off the shelf products if you can um, as a starting point just to test things out because getting stuff custom made is quite expensive. For several reasons, the off the shelf watch parts didn't really work out um, for mouse feet because first of all, they're quite expensive to begin with. Um, second of all, the thickness was not right. Um, the surface area was usually too small. 
and the largest surface area one, which is the weird shape one, um, it has a weird bump to it. So for all those reasons, it didn't make the ideal mass feet. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, um, I wanted to do colors. Number nine, you should know about the shape and the dimensions of sapphire skates and why it's not custom fitted to various mice. The custom fitted part, we wanted to make a universal um, set of mouse feet because if you're you know, going to invest in something like sapphire skates and it, it's unscratchable, you should be able to take it to your next mouse and the one after that. It should be able to outlast um, the mouse itself. And um, doing a universal shape um, is really the fastest way to accomplish that. The dimensions are seven millimeters in diameter and 1.1 millimeters thickness. Reasons for this is, first of all, let's start with um, thickness because that's the point that people get caught up on a lot. Some people think that you need to have 0.8 millimeters as a thickness of mouse feet, but um, actually 1.1 millimeters is within the um, recommendations of the sensor manufacturers like Pixart, and it does not have an impact on sensor accuracy, although having a little bit higher Z height is going to um, very slightly um, reduce your sensitivity, so you may want to compensate for that by increasing it. I did test thinner sapphire skates, and um, it just didn't work out in terms of, you know, being smooth and consistent, and having those super round edges and just easily gliding past any debris. The one thing that I should point out is that um, it's not going to cause you accuracy issues in terms of sensor accuracy, but you might have issues with liftoff distance, especially on Starlight 12. So if you're on Starlight 12. I do recommend that you um, change to the alternative setting for LOD. Um, but other than that, you should be good to go. It should work with um, any mouse. So future of Sapphire Skates is first of all, just continue to improve the product, um, keeping our core offerings the same. Second is release new colors of Sapphire. Um, and then the third is release alternative shapes. Now I'm not talking about necessarily custom fitted for a particular mouse model, but uh, we do have some other shapes um, in the works. Bonus points to end the video is what is up with Phil's a good man. You know, it's been a really long time since I posted a video. So I um, hope that uh, maybe some of you guys are wondering what I've been up to, but it's been focused on Sapphire Skates a lot. I'll still be around. Channel is not going away. Aside from Crunker, you guys may have remembered in the past I played Warzone, but lately I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends. So I have tried to make some time to game, but I do really appreciate you guys supporting me over the course of several years, uh, which is super awesome. So thanks for watching until the end of this video. And as a bonus, just leave a comment and um, you'll have a chance to win a set of Sapphire Skates.